a project that was funded by the Warwick International Higher Education Academy. Know-how has at its heart the desire to uh, increase understanding of open practice at Warwick and to help people realise the benefits and advantages of open practices in education. Open practice in education empowers us to make a difference through choices made in the way we behave online, choices which can impact positively to address inequality and disadvantage. In business, open practice is changing entire power structures and dynamics. This image is taken from the European report Opening Up Education, and you can get a copy from the links provided with this resource. The activities we will be doing will interface with each of these dimensions of open education. This session is focusing on finding great images. We're going to look at four aspects of finding images. We're going to look at finding, attribution, compression, and trying something new. So let's get started. So how do you go about finding a great image, perhaps for a presentation or an assignment you have to do? The first thing to remember is that images you find online are not available for you to just take. Um, anything that's put up online belongs to somebody. And images in particular are very easy to trace. So you should always know what rights you have over an image before you help yourself um, to images online. Here are a few very easy places to find lots of great sources of images uh, that are available for you to use freely. So Wikimedia Commons is a great place to start. Each image that's uploaded to Wikimedia Commons, and you can contribute yourself as well, um, always has listed the rights uh, around that image. So we have everything from CC0, which is openly available and open domain images that you can use, um, through to Creative Commons licensed resources as well. Um, Creative Commons Search is in beta at the moment, but again, a great place to start looking for images. The Flickr community has an area called Flickr Commons, and Flickr Commons can be searched for images. Again, this is a great source for perhaps something very specific. In my area, in language learning, we want something culturally specific, and there are whole communities in Flickr uh, that curate and collect and share openly their images through Creative Commons licensing. Um, if you're just doing a Google search, perhaps Google image search, then don't forget to use the advanced search features because then you can pick out an image according to the rights around it and make sure that nobody's going to be offended by you using their image. Um, there are other sources such as Pixabay that you may have heard of where again the rights around an image may be uh, very clear and easy for you to find what you want. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit later about how you then attribute an image. So if you found an image that you wish to use that is Creative Commons, um, you, you're going to need to know exactly what you can do with it. And you're going to need to follow the instructions of the license in order to use it fairly. Uh, generally, what I would use is um, li a license that's uh, Creative Commons and BY, because if it's BY, we just have to attribute that image back to the person that created it. And you'll see in future slides coming along just what that looks like. To correctly attribute your image, you need four pieces of information. And some of these can be provided through a link back to the original source. So we need the name of the image. Um, often on Flickr, you'll see the image name itself underneath the picture. You'll need the artist's name, and there again, you can just put a link back to their profile for that if you wish to. Uh, make sure that it's findable. The source, well, that could be part of the link. If the source was Flickr and the artist's profile has been linked in Flickr, then that's fine. You're, you're uh, achieving both of those in one go. 
and the details of the license. Um, so there are six different license types on Creative Commons. The most open is CC0 and CCBY, Creative Commons and Attribution, is one of the most common ways of sharing, which makes sure that the person who created and shared the image um, gets the uh, attribution for their contribution, which uh, I'm, I'm sure all of us would want as well. Um, and that goes right through to some of the less open licenses as well, to non-commercial and share alike licenses. The details of the licenses and how to use them can be seen on the Creative Commons website. So you've got your great images. You know where you're going to start now um, to put your, your um, presentation together. If you're going to display your work online then you may well want a smaller version of the image. So you may have downloaded your image as a high resolution file which is quite weighty, it could be a JPEG for example, but in order to very quickly convert that file and make sure that uh, it's easy to display online, you may want to compress it. Compressing and conversion can easily be done with lots of free online tools. So here we've got um, uh, a, a little online tool called Tiny PNG, uh, where you can literally just drop your files in and it will compress them for you into PNG files for website display. Um, there are other uh, sites that you can use, for example, GIMP, uh, but uh, Paint as well, which is free within uh, Windows. Um, Google Drive also has conversion tools which you can use. So play with a few, find the ones that suit you best to make sure that your image is small as well as beautiful and therefore will show up nice and quickly on a website. So we've done F, we've done A, we've done C and now we're going to do T. T is all about trying something new with your fabulous images. So if you're working online you may want to try something nice and easy as a starting point like this which is just making yourself an image and a meme uh, that can perhaps draw attention to your work and be shared. There are lots of, again, free online tools to make a meme. You upload your picture or use a picture that's already within the tool. Uh, just put meme generator into your search engine and you'll find lots of ways of doing that. You may want to use nice images as a backdrop. So I'm showing you here um, a site called Haiku Deck which is particularly good for Apple users, but it's a, a great way of finding great images for uh, very visual presentations. So this is a presentation tool, and Haiku Deck actually has already loaded within it lots of Creative Commons um, licensed images. So it will even take care of the attribution for you and the license management for you. So worth exploring that one. Uh, Pinterest is a very, very much a favourite uh, source of image collecting and image sharing as well, and visual learning. Lots and lots of great resources for learning on the Pinterest boards. And this one at the bottom right that I've illustrated for you here is a little tool called ThingLink. Um, ThingLink allows you to take an image and make it interactive by adding, as you can see here, little spots. And these little spots, each of them can be a link to a further document or an audio file or a video file. And they can be scattered around your image and then shared by, or embedded within a website. So you can have lots of fun with ThingLink as well, making the most of an image as a central point for a lot of different resources. So that was a very quick whiz through the facts around image sharing. And now you know how. Get out there and find yourself some great pictures. We will make sure that there are resources with this uh, recording that will help you explore. And as you can see here, there's an attribution. It's a, this is a CC0 image. But just to show you what an attribution might look like, I've got the name of the image the person 
which is also hyperlinked to where uh, to the profile of that person and the name of the source of the image which was Pixabay in this case and the license. Now that can be reduced in size so that it's really quite small and can be tucked underneath an image in a presentation for example. We're exploring open practices in education. If you want to know more, contact the KnowHow project. That's hashtag KnowHow. You'll find us on Twitter and I'm at Warwick Language. Thanks for listening.